Calaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Murder Weekly. This episode is titled, Nothing Happens. The 15th precinct buzzed with the usual cacophony of ringing phones, shuffling papers, and the distant wail of sirens. Detective Jack Sip Malloy leaned back in his chair, the worn leather creaking under his weight as he stared at the ceiling tiles, counting the stains left by years of neglect and budget cuts. It was a slow day in the homicide department, a rare occurrence in the city that never sleeps. Sip's desk was littered with empty coffee cups and half-finished reports, the detritus of a mind always on the hunt for the next lead, the next break in a case. But today, there were no fresh bodies, no new crime scenes to investigate, just the dull hum of bureaucracy and the weight of the unsolved cases that haunted the precinct walls. Detective Glenn Carlson leaned back in his chair, the creak of the leather echoing slightly in the quiet precinct. With a nonchalant flick of his pen, he turned to Sip, wearing a grin that didn't quite reach his eyes. You know, Sip, I'm so bored, I'm almost hoping someone decides to push their girlfriend out a window today. At least we'd have something interesting to do. Sip, already in a foul mood from the mountain of paperwork in front of him, didn't find the humor in Carlson's dark joke. He shot him a glare, his voice low and tinged with irritation. That's not funny, Carlson. People's lives aren't a game for your entertainment. Carlson shrugged, unfazed by Sip's crankiness. Ah, come on, Sip. It's just a joke. Besides, it's not like wishing for it makes it happen. We might as well find some humor in the darkness, or we'll end up like those sad sacks in cold cases. Sip's gaze drifted to the board that loomed in the corner of the bullpen, a monument to the department's failures. Each name, each photograph, was a reminder of a life cut short, a family left shattered, and a killer still walking free. The names seemed to mock him, taunting him with their mysteries. The East Side Strangler had struck fear into the hearts of women across the city, his reign of terror leaving a trail of broken bodies and shattered lives in its wake. The victims were all young, beautiful, and full of promise, their futures snuffed out by a monster who seemed to revel in their suffering. Each woman had been found with a silk scarf tied tightly around her neck, the delicate fabric cutting deep into their flesh, leaving behind a grotesque necklace of bruises and blood. But it was the look in their eyes that haunted Sip the most, a frozen expression of pure terror their final moments of agony etched forever on their lifeless faces. The Valentine's Day Massacre had been a crime of passion, a twisted love story gone horribly wrong. The young couple had been found in their bed, their bodies intertwined in a macabre embrace, their chests cracked open like ripe fruit. Their hearts had been carefully removed, the gaping holes in their flesh a testament to the killer's surgical skill and sadistic desire. Sip could still remember the sickly sweet scent of roses that had permeated the room, a cruel mockery of the love and romance that had once blossomed within those walls. But it was the subway slasher that had left the deepest scars on the city's psyche, a madman who had turned the city's lifeblood into a hunting ground for his depraved desires. The victims had been chosen at random, their only crime being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Some had been sliced open from throat to groin, their entrails spilling out onto the grimy tiles of the subway platform. Others had been hacked apart with a brutal efficiency, their severed limbs scattered like discarded toys. The killer had taken trophies from each victim, a twisted collection of fingers, ears, and eyes that had never been found. Sip had seen the crime scene photos, the images forever seared into his mind. The blood-splattered walls, the chunks of flesh and bone littering the tracks, the looks of abject horror on the faces of the first responders. He had watched grown men, hardened cops who had seen the worst that humanity had to offer, 
break down and weep at the sight of such unimaginable carnage. These were the cases that kept Sip up at night, the ones that haunted his dreams and plagued his waking hours. He knew that every unsolved murder, every killer who walked free, was a failure on his part, a stain on his soul that could never be washed clean. Sip would spend his off hours at a dimly lit bar in Yorkville, a place where the bartender knew not to bother with the pretense of a menu and where the glasses seemed to have a permanent smudge, a testament to the weary souls that frequented it. His drink of choice was a hard liquor, something with enough bite to silence the ghosts of cases unsolved and lives unlived. He didn't exactly nurse his drink. It was more an act of communion, a silent acknowledgement of the day's burdens, shared with the amber liquid in his glass. He was acutely aware that every detective had their own method of coping with the darkness that trailed them like a persistent shadow. Some found solace at the bottom of a bottle, letting the burn of cheap whiskey wash away the images that haunted their dreams. These nights were filled with the hollow clink of glass, the murmur of old songs playing on a jukebox, and the slow, steady rhythm of forgetting. Others sought escape in the transient warmth of a stranger's embrace, a temporary reprieve from the loneliness that gnawed at their edges. It was a search for something resembling connection, however fleeting, in a world that often felt cold and indifferent. The morning would inevitably bring back the stark reality, but for a few hours, the illusion of understanding, of being understood, was enough to keep the darkness at bay. Sip understood all these methods of escape, yet judged none. The job demanded more than most could comprehend, taking a toll on the soul that was difficult to articulate. The horrors they witnessed, the stories of lives interrupted, the constant brush with humanity's capacity for cruelty, it left scars that were not easily healed. In the muted glow of the bar, amidst the low hum of conversations and the occasional clink of glasses, Sip found a kind of solace. It wasn't about forgetting or even forgiveness. It was about endurance. Each sip was a reminder that he had made it through another day, that he was still standing, still fighting on days like this when the city was quiet and the phones were silent. Sip's mind wandered down the twisted paths of the psychopaths and sociopaths he had encountered over the years. He wondered what made them tick, what dark impulses drove them to take a life, to snuff out the light in another's eyes. He had seen the face of evil, stared into the abyss and watched it stare back. And yet he knew that he would never truly understand the depths of human depravity, the sickness that lurked in the hearts of men. As the day wore on and the shadows grew long, Sip found himself drawn back to the board, his eyes tracing the lines of each case, each mystery that had eluded him. He knew that someday, whether through luck perseverance or sheer force of will, he would find the answers he sought, the pieces that would make the puzzle whole. Murder Weekly is a Calaroga Shark media production, written and hosted by Aidan I. Flanagan, Produced by Mark Francis. Executive producers, Mark Francis and John McDermott. Portions of this podcast may have been created with the assistance of AI. Calaroga Shark Media 